Okay, we've got to put together a basic program. Uh, we've been playing with the tool holder, trying to figure out how to get it to actually change the tools properly. Uh, just kind of an inspector in it. I also took apart the uh, cover and re-greased that uh, cam assembly for the, uh, uh, the down tool holder. The part that actually swings the arm. It has a large cam and there were some metal chips and things like that in there. And I cleaned all that out and greased it up. Um, I basically got a test program here. Okay, air compressors cause problems in shops. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do cycle start on this. Uh, I've ran this a couple of times and I'm basically going back to the manual. Uh, and I added a, a, a G00 to the uh, Z axis return point. See if it'll actually make the tool holder work. So far, basically what's happened is that it'll run the entire program, but when it switches tools, the arm swings out and stops, and then you really have to you really have to back it up. It won't go any further than that. So right now it's doing three to tap and cycle. That's where it halts. Basically, it's pushing the tool out, spinning around with the spindle. Um, looking at the mating here, uh, it looks good. Basically, what I'm getting is a feet hole. Uh, I don't know that I'll get this resolved tonight. I've only been working on it a few hours after work. And, uh, I may start fresh anew after doing some research tonight on the computer. Uh, so, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to back this out. The audio is not going to be real great because I'm, you know, I'm next to the machine and the fans running. But I'm going to do the best I can to describe, at least on this machine, how to back out the tool holder. Because this probably took me about an hour to figure out. Uh, watch, looking at the ladder diagram on the machine and what it's supposed to do here to actually figure out how to back this machine out. So the first thing you notice, we've got a feed hole. Um, we're going to go, want to go over to Jog, which is on this machine. Jog will actually enable the uh, ATC controls in the front panel. Uh, right now, it's expecting that chuck to release. That's the next step. So that's what I'm going to do. The next thing, I'm going to flip the uh, bar out of the way. So I'll lock the, uh, the draw bar back, and now I'm actually just going to push the tool back into the carriage and let the program continue. Okay, um, here it, you know, it's actually going to do some, uh, some machining. Uh, it's basically going to go down and do some circular holes, uh, like with an end mill. Obviously there's nothing in the bed so it's not it's not gonna crash or anything like that. Set of limit switches that are on a cam on the side of the tool holder. 
a tool changer uh, that may be causing a problem. Uh, by listening to them, they sound like they're actually without actually tracing them down. I don't know that I'll get that in my. Uh, I don't know that they're working other than they're making the proper clicking sound when like you push the switch. Now we're on the rest of the board. And this is just some linear moves with some circles, diagonals, that kind of thing. This is what I've been using to actually test. See if I have any major problems. I've already inspected the ball screws on all the axes. Um, they look great. There's not a lot of backlash uh, considering how old this machine is. Uh, the ways look great. Or the linears. Um, all in all, I think the only issue I've got is either a, a programming issue with the tool changer, or something's actually wrong. And I'm going to dig around a little bit on YouTube and see if I can find another one of these machines and just actually watch its operation a couple of times to see what step it may be skipping out on. One other thing that I did do, I haven't played with it much, um, but I installed a one of the, uh, I think these are called Titans, a uh, really inexpensive DNC uh, embedded device. Um, it actually works really good. Uh, I didn't pay a lot of money for it. If you saw a bunch of my other videos, I actually build stuff like this all the time. Uh, but this is, was pre-packaged already, you know, the application's already written. Uh, my interest was getting the machine up and going. And I really wanted an easy way of sending back data and storing it here. This works really great. It's got two USB slots, uh, RS-232. Uh, this one did come with a cable. And you basically have a nice magnet on the back. So you basically just pop it on your machine. Uh, you know, this drip feeding is the way that, uh, basically the way you feed these older machines, they don't have a lot of internal memory. The outlet here is just a regular looking out. They do disclose that this is a hundred volts versus a 110 or 120. Luckily, the power adapter that comes with this does support 100 volts. It supports 100 volts up to 120 volts. And it works just fine power. So that worked out really well. Um, I did a couple other things other than just leveling and things like that uh, tonight. Um, I fixed the monitor. It still has some sideways skew, but all the scan lines it was basically had too much brightness. They're gone. Uh, and it scaled out you know, larger, so it doesn't look as compressed as it was. And this will do fine. I was considering doing the LCD upgrade, uh, but I have not confirmed with any vendor that has one. It's inexpensive, uh, whether they're doing a single color video adapter inside of their uh, module, or if they actually support the RGB. I know on this OM, OM series, I dug through the perimeter list, there is a color option. These do output RGB values. So I know some of this is in color. I saw a couple of online shots of the OM uh, series with a color LCD. Um, it, it's, it doesn't do a lot of it, just kind of differentiate some of the fields. But for now, um, I've got the screen working okay. Other things I plan to do is I'll probably replace this keypad. Everything else I think is, is good to go once I get the tool holder working. Uh, the automatic tool changer working. Uh, I did check the drawbar pressure and it looks good. Uh, I, I, before I checked the drawbar pressure, I wanted to make sure that I could actually get a new drawbar. Uh, they, I, they don't have one that's ready made. I would have to buy a drawbar blank, which I found the correct uh, the bell in, uh, but I would actually have to, to cut and modify that drawbar, which is not a problem on the length. Um, I also found the, uh, the washers, the spring washers, to fix drawbar pressure. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm good on drawbar pressure. I've obviously taken off a bunch more panels. Um, I had the rear panel of this off earlier. Um, one thing I like about this machine, it basically has an identical panel there and an identical panel there that basically just comes off real easy. You can 
call up in the machine, do what you need to do, be able to see just about everything. Um, and I loaded up uh, tools, tool, a couple of tools that I had. Um, the one thing I like about this is the access door on the side of the tool. That is actually really nice. And there's actually a carousel advance button back there. Uh, so you don't have to walk around in front of the machine. You can just kind of sit back there and advance the carousel and load tools at will. I plan on trying to get the uh, coolant tanks sealed up and connected. Uh, they're kind of sitting over here to the side. And chip trays are sitting outside uh, getting washed, trying to get everything that may be contaminated with old cooling or what have you, cleaned up and ready to go. And I'll end up having to flush the machine with a cleaner, uh, get all that, get all the gunk out of whatever's in there. Because I want to start with a, a brand new, fresh batch of cooling um, that'll hopefully last me for a year or so. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, definitely if you've had one of these machines and you know something about this tool holder or tool changer, I'd appreciate any comments. And thanks for watching.